Hi, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and I teach automotive and pretty much, not every, but quite a lot of the workshop tasks that I do uh, and that I teach my students the various skills that they need for the big wide world later on, um, I usually put to video. Now, I do a lot of home jobs as well and that's where we are now. This is a different workshop to the one that you've seen in previous videos because we've moved house. Lost my big workshop, unfortunately, temporarily, but we have got two of these garages, so that's okay. Um, we're working on a Yam uh, 2013 Yamaha Viking. That's one of those ride-in ATVs. Pretty cool machines, actually. Uh, this one has come uh, to me because uh, the local dealers didn't seem too enthusiastic about going to go and inspect this vehicle on site uh, on one of the islands. It was just too much hassle, which is fair enough. But they've got plenty of work to do anyway. Now, um, we've, on the previous video, uh, fitted the piston, the barrel, all that kind of stuff to the engine. And the head now has come back from the machine shop. Oh, lovely and shiny, look at that. Because it needed to be skimmed. Uh, if you look back at one of the, uh, the, measure, or the measurement engine component measurement video, uh, you'll notice that the, the, uh, the flatness of the head failed. And we had the straight edge and the feeler gauges. I think the spec from memory was 0 0.03 millimeters. Anything more than that on, on warpage was a fail. Uh, this did fail. It, it's, this engine's been run, um, stop started many, many times um, and overheated, which has caused over a period of time the cylinder head to, to warp. Um, there was a head gasket failure, and before that, there was a thermostat failure causing that, we think. So, anyway, it's back to the engineering shop. Um, when you send a head away to get machines, you normally got to completely strip it out, uh, which I've done. So now we're going to go through and reassemble. Oh, shiny! We're going to reassemble this head, uh, ready to fit back onto the engine. And the fitting of it back onto the engine will be another video. So many, so much editing to do. It's crazy. Right. Here we go. <clears throat> now, because this head had overheated. Uh, we're fitting new valve stem oil seals now. Um, these tend to go hard if they uh, if they get too hot. Now, not due to, uh, and also due to age as well. Um, but if that rubber in there gets hard, then it, its ability to um, to flex and stay in contact with the valve stem diminishes, and as a result, we can get um, oil burning through the circuit, gets dragged down into the cylinder, if it's the intake valve, valve stem oil seal that's failed, and then we're going to get blue smoke. If it's the exhaust valve, valve oil stem seal, then we tend not to get blue smoke, we tend to get um, unburnt spots of engine oil coming out of the exhaust, um, depends, if it's got a catalytic converter then sure it's going to burn as it goes through the cat probably, and it's not going to do the cat any good either. Um, but if you look at the back of the vehicle, uh, or even in the exhaust pipe, if you get um, actually wet oil, then it's an indication that those valve stem oil seals are on the way out. Now these just fit over the valve guide. There's a little a little lip on there, and there's a little lip inside here. And all we need to do is just drop it in some oil, and then you should really be able to push it over. There we are. Push it over with your fingers. You, they're not a hammer-on thing. If you hammer, go anywhere near with a hammer, you're going to distort the seal and damage it. It's a push-on thing normally, um, so don't abuse them. If you come to take them off for any reason, you're going to have to replace them. You, you can't refit them again because taking them off usually damages them anyway. Okay. Now on this particular engine, all the four valve stem oil seals are the same, but again. On your particular engine, if you're doing a different one to this, it's a good idea to double check that you're fitting the right seal to the right side. Uh, otherwise, if one of these comes off, and that has happened to me in the past once, I think, um, then she's going to start to lose oil. There we go, that one in. One more to go. These things are cheap. And to replace them now takes no additional labour whatsoever. 
In fact, they have to be replaced on this particular job. But if you're doing a head over hole, just put new ones in. There we go. That's that last one in there as well. Okay. And the reason why I've put plenty of oil on them is the fact that we're going to be putting the valves in shortly. And we want a bit of lubrication on there. Right. Time to fit some valves. Um, so now it's time we fit the valve guides, uh, sorry, the valve stem oil seals. And now it's time to refit these into the head. Now it's really important that you label them up. They all need to go back in the same holes they came out of because, end of the day, these are matched valve stems with the valve guides. They're worn together. So <clears throat> let's start off with. My labelling, intake valve A. Alright, so, intake valve A, we'll pop that with, with a bit of oil on there actually. Now, I've not put any gloves on this time around because putting collets in wearing gloves is just a nightmare, so I'm going to have to take the risk. Okay, so, just easing it through that valve stem oil seal lubricating it nicely there we go that's that one in and of course we've got the valve spring and the cap now I've kept those together so I know which way up they go and we'll drop that down over there next now the next stage is to use our trusty valve spring compressor now I'm going to do a close-up shot of this for you I'll fit it first and then um, and you can see its positioning. Okay, this is going to be really hard for me to work on now that the camera's in the way, but you'll see now that we've got the valve spring down here compressed, and now there's sufficient room to get the collets in. Now the collets on this particular engine are all the same. There you go. So we don't need to worry about which ones are intake and which ones are exhaust. What you do need for this job is a very small well, there we go, magnetic screwdriver and a great deal of patience. I have the screwdriver. Patience is something that you just learn over time. Okay, so we're going to post, oh, we're going to post that one in there. I will only do one of these to camera because after that you'll be bored. Now you need a non magnetic screwdriver just to make sure that it's home. Now a lot of people put grease on these things to stop them moving around and that's that's not a bad idea and it may well come to that depending on how well they behave themselves. Okay, so that collet now is in the correct position. You can just see the valve stem head just protruding beyond the collet, which is normal. There is a groove, um, here's another one. There's a groove in the top of the valve here. Just there, look, okay. And in the collet, in the collet itself, there's a little ridge and that must go in to that groove and you need to be doubly sure that it's correct because if it's not then um, it's going to fail and when it fails wow don't they fail spectacularly okay I want to rotate that valve around, I'll flip the collet around a little bit so I can get the other one in from the top. There we go. They, sometimes these things go in really quick and sometimes they're an absolute ball ache. I make my students do, um, do an, an entire head 
So I'm using a combination of a magnetic screwdriver to get the whole thing into position and a non-magnetic one so that I can manipulate it around. I would never be a very good brain surgeon, I know that. Oops, right, let's do that one again. Fortunately, with the power of editing, this is going to look, make it look like I'm a professional. Right, that's one done. And you can see there's a big gap here. And I have to tell you, believe me, there's a small, there's in fact no gap underneath. To have correctly fitted collets, the, each collet should not be touching the other. There should be an even gap between them. It's going to release a little bit of pressure. There we go. I'll just rotate that round so maybe you can see. Well, you can't see a lot, I know. I can just use the scriber. To, uh, adjust the position and try and get an even gap. There we go. Between those two collets. Bingo. Okay. So that's what you should be aiming at. You can see the collets now correctly mounted. We've got ah, near as damn it an even gap. Maybe we can just give that a little tweak. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So we've now got the first of the intake valves is now installed with the spring, the collets and the cap. You can see those, the position of those valve stem oil seals now as well, look. Okay, there are the new ones. And the valve is in. There's no need to lap this valve in. We've not changed anything as it was before. Let's do number two. Okay, so we've got the second intake valve now. We need a bit of oil on the valve stem. So we're just putting the oil on the valve there, look. There's already some oil on the um, valve stem oil seal. I'm just going to gently ease that through. Don't want to damage the seal. There we go. We've already got the spring ready with the cap. Pop that on. So pop that onto there. Onto the valve cap. And um, we're just gonna just gonna wind that down. Make sure you've got your lock held in place, depending on the style of valve spring compressor you've got. Who knows? This one might be a bit easier. So we've got here the uh, the magnetic screwdriver and the non-magnetic, and we're just going to place that, can you see that? Okay. Whoa, maybe not so good. Just going to place that on there. Well, that was easy enough, it's not going to stay there though. I think we can probably wind that out a little bit. It's all about getting the positioning just right. There you go, so you can clearly see now the first collet in position down there and now I've just got to offer in the second collet but what I want to do before I do that is just rotate that one around to make it easier to get the second one in. There is a huge art to this, a lot of skill and a lot of patience as well. If you keep your cool it usually goes to plan. Right, both collets are in position, we're just going to hold that top one, at least we can hold one of them, and slowly release spring pressure, there we go, now 
Now we're just going to adjust the gap again. There we go. Ah, finally. Okay. So now both intake valves have been refitted in, this, in the original positions before we strip the head down. The collets have been refitted and the collet spacing has now been made correct. I'm going to flick the head round now and I'll do the two exhaust valves. Right, first, well, second, second job on the head. We've fitted the, the first job was to fit the new valve stem oil seals and now we've refitted the valves into the head. Valve springs and bits and pieces, they're all done. See all the valves labelled up? How cool is that? Right, we're now going to move on and we're going to refit the camshaft and then the rockers. Right, it's time to reinstall the camshaft. And inside the camshaft, because it's hollow, it has a decompression system in there, which comprises of two components. We've got uh, the shaft, which runs inside, and we've also got the pin. Now the pin sits in the exhaust lobe. Okay, we've got the hole there with the rounded end of the pin outwards and the slot facing the sprocket end of the camshaft. So we'll just drop that in there. See down there or not? There we are. Okay. And there's a lug, there's a that recess, hang on, I'll show you this outside. So that's the pin inside the camshaft with the with the slot. And basically what happens is the shaft sits in there and as the shaft rotates it lifts the pin up and the pin then prevents the valve from fully closing therefore eliminating any compression to aid cold starting I suppose okay and then when uh, and then it's an automatic one as well so it looks after itself. There's no, there's no levers or anything for us to do. There used to be old, levers on the old, old engines. So that rotates up and down um, as that shaft rotates. But it's important it's put in the correct position. So we drop the pin in into the camshaft, and then, hopefully, that then goes in there and engages there we go okay so to engage pin comes up and it only has to um, protrude a small distance it doesn't give us any specifications in the manual okay and that's just going to stop the valve that particular valve in fact both valves because on a rocker both exhaust valves not quite sealing on their seat so we're going to lose some compression through there and then to deactivate it rotates and it sits down below the camshaft area. Now one thing to be aware of on this camshaft is because um, the, the surface area of the camshaft is greatly reduced where that pin sits is we might start to see some, some excessive wear in this region so just double check that if it's an older vehicle. Okay, so the manual tells us to install um, the camshaft in that position. So if we get the head, I'll try and do this to camera a bit easier for you. If we get the head and we're going to slot that in with the two dowel pins in the horizontal position. Okay, now obviously these are horizontal, so they've got to line up with these two, these two lugs. So in that position there is essentially where it should be. Okay? Okay, so a bit of an easier camera position for you. So we're going to just align those two pins and the two dowels there should be aligned horizontally with these here. There we go. Okay, it's going to move around, got to keep adjusting it. Now, the next step is to refit the rockers. <clears throat> right, so we're going to install the intake rocker first of all. And we need to make sure that we lubricate all the moving components with just engine oil, pop that in there. And the same goes for the roller as well. That's gonna run on the on the camshaft, so we want a bit of oil on the roller. There you go. And of course, 
on the camshaft itself. I'm just going to remove that bolt. Don't need that in there anymore. Not for now, anyway. Okay, so we can give that a little tap. There we go. And if you just just tap it through until you can just to say you feel it. There we go. It's only got too far because you've got to fit the rocker. So I'm just going to pop the rocker in there. And just jiggle the rocker around until you can feel it align with the rocker shaft. There we go. Perfect, he says. Now, I'm going to put that bolt back in. Actually, got plenty of threads on there. Don't want to damage the threads in there. We'll give it a little tap. And you've got to tap these down all the way. There we go. Until it bottoms out until it's at the far end of the drilling. Give that a check. Cool. Right, intake is done. Exhaust to go. Okay, so again, this is the exhaust rocker shaft. Again, we've previously inspected all of these. They're all a pass. The engine's very, well, pretty new. It's done hardly any work at all. And again, we're just going to tap that down. And so we can just say, feel it, other side. A bit more oil on the roller. I've already got oil on the camshaft, so we're all good there. Just checking that dowel's in place, which it is. And then we can offer that through. There we go. Beauty of rubber hammers. Right, again, we'll just wind that in. Just to tap it home. So rockers are now in place, rocker shafts are in place, everything's oiled up. Right, so dowels horizontal and the decompressor off to about two o'clock. Right, the next thing to install is this uh, bearing retainer plate, which sits on the other side of the um, this flange for the camshaft sprocket, and it sits basically on those two holes like that. Um, it's retained by these two M6 bolts and these need to have, if you look closely you'll see on there there's some remnants of the old thread lock. So they need to have thread lock on. Now if I remember rightly this used to, this was actually quite a, a jiggly experience trying to get this, uh, this plate into position. Um, so here we go. Almost. There we go. Right, so the plates now, you can see it's retaining the two uh, rocker shafts and it also retains the camshaft bearing and therefore the camshaft, actually very important. It's retaining its position within the head um, and we do need to use some thread lock on these bolts. 
Now this head um, has been chemically washed so there's no oil present in these holes, which is good. I think the thread lock's going to work really well. And the torque setting for these bolts is 10 newton meters. Again, pretty standard for an M6 bolt with Yamaha is 10 newton meters. So if you're looking around for a torque setting and you can't find it, it's always a good one to go with. There we go. Right, torque wrench. One, two. Excellent. Now I'm just going to pop these two bolts in here. This is the, the, the um, centrifugally operated um, decompression system. So basically what happens, if you look underneath, there's the end of the shaft which runs through the camshaft operating the, the pin which prevents the, um, the valves, um, the exhaust valves from um, fully seating so we lose compression. And the way it, the way it works is it, there's a pin just under there look okay and that pin sits between those two triangular lugs so when you refit it it needs to go on like that. If I hold it in position you can see now that when when this is spinning at a certain speed that then is thrown out. So in the rest position, the decompression pin is actuated. And then once the engine started, this is then thrown out and that pin inside the camshaft lobe is retracted and the valves can fully seal. So under normal operating conditions, that is thrown outwards when the engine's running. It's just during starting that this will rotate uh, insufficiently fast for this to, to remain inwards and the pin to be pushed out. Clever stuff. Now I can't actually tighten these two bolts up so I'm not going to put any thread lock on them. I'm just going to put them in finger tight for now and then once the head's on the engine and we can lock everything holding the, uh, the flywheel then we can tweak it up. Okay so that's about as far as we can go now. We can't fit the sprocket just yet because we've got to have the cam chain on the sprocket to be able to get it up. Once it's on, it's going to sit on there like that. And there's your timing mark. And there's the timing lug just at the top there, look. So pretty easy. So at this point in time, that's everything that I want to do on the head prior to um, installation. I'm assuming I can get this camshaft sprocket off. There we are, look. Okay. So we're about ready now to, um, to put the head onto the, uh, on top of the cylinder and get it bolted down. Right, it's now time to refit the head. And uh, it's important we get the head gasket the correct way around because it is a use once item. So, what have we got? Let's have a little look. New telltale signs. Yes. We've got slightly thicker casing here to here, so the head gasket will go in that orientation. So, I'm just going to snip off that tail on the um, zip tie there, look. We have to lose the whole zip tie shortly, don't anyway. Right. And again, the lugs, the two lugs here, have been taken out of the head and they were put into the barrel ready. And that's going to help to align that head gasket. Now, remember before, this head gasket failed in this area here. And it was this bolt here that was quite loose. It was nowhere near torque. Now, when fit, refitting the head, you've got to make sure uh, the surface on the head is clean and all the old gaskets being removed it stands to reason this has been skimmed so this is super clean uh, and ready for going on we'll just give it a quick dust down because we have been working on it uh, just to remove any final deposits of oil sticky fingers that kind of thing we want to give that head gasket the best possible chance of sealing we don't want to repeat 
of the problems that this engine's already experienced so far. Right, so what we need to do, this head gasket is now in position and the two dowels are in place holding the head gasket aligned for us and very carefully at this point in time I'm about to drop the head we've got a bit of wire on the cam chain we're just going to thread that through that's to stop us losing the cam chain later on and then we can bring the head down just watching out for those valve guides feeling it onto the two dowels There we go. There's a little magic hammer. Perfect. Okay, so the head now is on the barrel, just sitting there quite happily. I know it's happy. Right, and now we can uh, install the head bolts. Okay, so the uh, the longest bolts, which are 145 mil in length, go on the camshaft side. The slightly shorter ones are on the other side of the engine. We're just going to run these up finger tight to start off with. And again, always diagonal. Want the whole thing to sit squarely on top of the barrel. There we go. Excellent. Now we have two more bolts, both the same. Uh, one is for the front, that's the one that uh, came loose previously, and one is for the rear. So I'll pop those in. So these are the, the additional two, so there's now six bolts clamping that head gasket down. These ones are at the highest torque as well. Good to know, because uh, they are the problem areas of the head gasket, no doubt. Right. Could be interesting, tighten that over the top wrench. Excellent. Uh, there are two more bolts still to go in. I'll be putting those on at the end. Um, there's no need to fit those just yet. We can get the main head bolts torqued down, and then we'll deal with this, and then we'll get the uh, the cam chain put on and the engine timed up. Okay, so the main four head bolts, the long ones, the torque setting is 35 newton meters. That is not much, gentlemen. Remember the old Suzuki's were like 60 odd. Okay. So, 35 newton meters is selected on the torque wrench. There you go, look. It's the black scale at the top. Can you read that? Yeah, so 35 on there. And the first one to start off with is what I would say is the uh, the bottom right so we're not going to go the full 35 we're just going to work our way around slowly bring up the torque to try and keep the head as square as possible Uh, 
35. There we go. Okay, so these four now are talked up in sequence. So we started off, we did um, essentially you've got to do opposites. So this one, and then this one, this one, and then this one. That's those four torqued down. We've now got the front and the rear additional bolts to torque down, and they need to be 38 slightly more. Here lies the problem because I don't have any crow's feet here at the moment. Right, so we've got to torque that front one down first and at this point in time I don't think we're going to be able to get in. We might have to take this off, I think. Yeah, let's do that because talking down the head gasket is really important. So I'm going to remove this and uh, tweak that up. Looks like I might be making a gasket. That'd be another video. Right, how to make gaskets. Easy. Now it's imperative that the uh, the head gasket, the head bolts are done up. Oh, look at that, it's an o ring. Fantastic. Cheers, Yamaha. Brilliant! Save the day. I have some special Yamaha stuff for that. Right, we're on 38 with the torque wrench. I've already adjusted it up. We can get onto there and we can torque that one down. Now again, I'm going to just do the front and the rear progressively together to bring them up to torque. It's all about trying to keep the whole thing even. I love my engine, right. There we go, 38 on the front. Thirty-eight on the rear. Done. We'll back that off now. So the only two that are left are two on the front here. Turn that round for you. Just got these two left to do now. Now they're uh, an M6. They can go in there like that. And extra long. No. You can bit your bottom dollar, these are going to be 10 newton meters torque. Right, 10 newton meters, okay. One, two, it's done a lot. Got the head gasket held out. Yeah, it's all been done to spec, so it's just fine. Okay, I'll deal with that coolant pipe a bit later on. I want to get it timed up first and check the valve clearances. Um, so the next step is to install the cam chain sprocket, the cam chain, uh, essentially with the, two, the cam chain sprocket and um, or cam shaft and the crank shaft um, in their correct positions so that our valve timing is correct and we've got various timing marks to help us with that and the first stage of this operation is to um, get the crank shaft in the correct position now at this point in time the none of the valves are open so it's quite safe to rotate the crankshaft. This is something you must double check before you do this. Um, if you've installed the camshaft in a position where it's holding uh, one of the valves or of the valve, one side, intake or exhaust, open or both, then to rotate 
the uh, also move the piston up the bore. If it was to go near TDC, it could make contact with um, some of those valves and bend the valves, and then you're starting all over again, unfortunately. So make sure that you none of the valves are being pushed down by the rockers, and these aren't. There's clearance between all both all the rockers and the valves. It's free to move, so we can now rotate the crankshaft uh, into the TDC position. Um, we've got to the point now with the engine where the head has been bolted down uh, and all the head bolts have been torqued and we can now set the, um, the valve timing. We can install the cam chain, we can install the, uh, the decompression system, the centrifugal decompressor. Um, so I'm going to reconfigure the camera for you because there's some really tiny timing marks you've got to be able to see and it may be that I have to hold the camera to do this uh, as opposed to it being on the tripod. Let's find out. Okay, we're just rotating the crankshaft and unfortunately on this particular engine it's very very hard to see the flywheel. Now the bit we're looking at is that bit there. Okay, it's a very narrow, it's got some letters on there now F41 which is totally meaningless, we're not interested in that at all. Okay, there you go, look at that. Okay, so a bit of time. We're going to rotate that crankshaft very slowly until we see a, um, a H and a line. I think. Could be there. I'll go with that. So that line needs to align with this notch on the casing here. Now, it may not look aligned on the camera but I can assure you it will be. There you go that is the timing mark aligned on the crankshaft so we now know the pistons at top dead center. Right the next job is to install the sprocket onto the camshaft which is here in such a way that there is no slack in the cam chain on this side. There's your time mark on the sprocket and this lug here is the the mark that has to align with. So let's give that a go. I'm going to put the bolts in without thread lock to start off with and I'll take one out at a time uh, and add the thread lock that we need to add. Okay now one of the downsides of doing this now is we could, we have to take this, this wire off and the, the potential risk, which does happen sometimes, is dropping the cam chain. Doesn't matter how long it takes, what we mustn't do is drop the whole thing on down the, uh, down the casing. And of course, during all of this time, the crankshaft may well be moving around. Okay, so the cam chain is on the sprocket. As you can see, we're not quite aligned. So if we get that lined up on the camshaft, onto the dowels. There we go. We'll just put a bolt in just to be on the safe side. Pull that chain falling down. Right, so you can see we're a tooth out. I'm just going to check the crankshaft. And that was still bang on. Oh, maybe it's moved a fraction. Hang on. Perfect. Okay, so the crank is aligned. I just want to put a little bit of tension on the cam chain tensioner on this side. 
to make sure there's no slack. Okay, so we're definitely a tooth out. So we need to take that sprocket off. Now what you can do, again, another little trick to give you a datum is if we just mark on the chain and the sprocket, then we know that the sprocket needs to go onto the chain one tooth back. That's assuming the chain doesn't come off at the bottom sprocket, which, which they can sometimes. Depends how much slack there is. So we'll get rid of that. Now, I'm just gonna ease the sprocket off. There we go. And it needs to go one tooth back. Now, if you're cunning, and I usually aren't, Onto the sprocket again, onto the uh, camshaft, onto the dowels, and hey presto, if you look at that now, you will see that the tummy mark is aligned here, and of course the sprocket can only go in one position on the camshaft, it's keyed to the camshaft, so that's not going to move. We're aligned at the top, it's really important to get straight ahead, isn't it? aligned at the top on the camshaft sprocket. So the valve timing on this engine is now set. Sorry about the shit camera work. Okay, so there you go. Proof that everything's lined up. Now, what's left to do is to tighten everything up, put the camshaft sprocket retaining bolts on, and then we're going to rotate the engine by hand to double check everything lines up again so that we know when we crank it over it's not going to bend valves and things okay so like we said before we need thread lock on the bolts assume we have some left yes we do there we are look at that there's a little bit that's all you need And we're also going to put thread lock on the um, decompression assembly, that centrifugal assembly here, these two bolts. So we can do those at the same time, and then we can torque them all up together. Try and be efficient. It would be a shame to drop one of these down the uh, down the casing, wouldn't it, right now? But hey, something's on our side. Right. Torque settings coming up. 20 newton meters, which means we can just, just do that on a big torque wrench. Before we do that, we're going to install, install the cam chain tensioner unit. The last thing we want is for that to jump a tooth whilst we're tightening it up. Before we do that, we're going to install, install the cam chain tensioner unit. The last thing we want is for that to jump a tooth whilst we're tightening it up. Okay, so we're just going to refit the um, cam chain tensioner. And first of all, before we can do that, we've got to remove the internal spring. You take that out on the bench. Uh, I've cleared off, off all the gasket area and then you push the, um, the little ratchet back and then you can push that all the way in and then we can refit it. That pops into there like that. 
Uh, we'll just grab our two bolts. These two here. In they go, and again, your torque setting is 10 newton meters. Okay, so we're just going to refit the um, cam chain tensioner. And first of all, before we can do that, we've got to remove the internal spring. So you take that out on the bench. Uh, I've cleared off, off all the gasket area, and then you push the, um, the little ratchet back, and then you can push that all the way in and then we can refit it that pops into there like that and we we'll just grab the two bolts so these two here In they go, and again, your torque setting is 10 newton meters. Very strange working behind the camera for once. There we go. And now we can reinstall the spring. Now, there is a copper washer on there. Maybe, it's a very thick one as well. Maybe there's a new one in the kit. Let's have a quick scan. Just in she goes, and you can hear the ratchet start to work already and take up the slack on that cam chain. It pushes against the, uh, the slider. So 20 newton meters for that one and 10 the two mounts. Oh, look at that, we're on 20. Great job. What size is it? Perfect. There we go. 20 newton meters. Right, just while I'm on, we're going to refit the temperature sender. I took that out. Uh, when it went for the head to be skimmed, so we'll pop that back in there again. Much easier now than later on. Now, we don't have a torque setting for that in the engine section, so... So now the chain is tensioned, or under tension, I should say. Uh, we can now tighten up these four bolts, two of which retain the camshaft sprocket, and two of which retain the um, centrifugal um, system that operates the decompressor. The two for the decompressor unit are 20 newton meters. Rocky ones are 10. Okay. It doesn't matter if the crankshaft now moves a little bit, it's not a problem. So we're doing the um, the decompressor um, retaining bolts to 20 newton meters. There we go. And they've got thread lock on there as well. Cool. Right, the other two the whole socket on need to be to 10 newton meters. Wow, that's not tight at all. You would 
think it was tighter. Really. There we go. Okay. So now we can very carefully rotate the engine. So I'm just going to back off the camera. Okay, so the head's all bolted up, the valve timing's all done, all these bolts are nice and tight. Um, one last check before we actually put all the covers back on. Uh, I've still got the valve clearance just to check. They should be fine, but we'll check them anyway. Um, is to rotate the engine uh, and double check that all the timing marks actually do line up. So, here we go. Now, if we've got the timing wrong, the piston could tap into the valves. And now is the time to check. Now, there's no spark plug in there, so we've got no compression going on. So we're just over one. Okay, so that's one full revolution of the camshaft, which obviously is two of the crank, which is what we want. Let's find the torch. Just double check that we're pretty, well, we are aligned. And we are, perfect. Okay, really happy with that. Don't worry that the uh, the mark on the cam chain doesn't line up now with the, the sprocket. It won't, that was purely put on there to help us jiggle the cam camshaft uh, sprocket around onto the correct location on the chain. Now it's irrelevant. As soon as you move it, it becomes irrelevant. Okay, very happy with that indeed. Um, we're now going to check the valve clearances. Damn, well, as it turns out, in the section of Yamaha manual that I've printed off, it doesn't actually, in that engine part, give me the valve clearances. So it'll be under the servicing section, so we can't check the valve clearances at this point in time. Although, fortunately, on this Yamaha Viking, the, uh, the head is, ex is easily accessible. Uh, once the engine's back in the frame, so I will check them later. Um, in the meantime, we need to cover up all these exposed engine areas, and the first is we're going to refit the um, camshaft sprocket cover, the access cover there, and there is an O-ring that should be replaced, and it came in the top end gasket sets kit, so we're going to flick that off, and we're going to fit a nice new one. Genuine parts, relatively speaking, have come down quite a bit um, in the last sort of 10 years. The main manufacturers have realised that um, they are ultimately competing against aftermarket suppliers. And as a result, if they want to sell any reasonable volume, once the vehicle's finished its warranty period, um, then the prices have to be reasonable. And... Um, I think they are. I think, you know, in general, they're not bad at all, really. And you're getting really good quality or assured quality equipment, um, parts for your, for your repair. Um, Yamaha don't provide me any reduction in the parts. In fact, the customer bought all the parts himself. I'm just doing the, doing the actual um, work, so to speak. It just turned out easier that way. He's already got an account, so... Okay, so all the cack has now been cleaned off around the outside. Get the new O-ring. And quite simple, just hold it on one place and flick it around. Dink. And it's on. Good idea to put a spot of grease on there. Uh, and that's going to aid, or even, even some light oil is fine, just rub a bit of oil around there. And that's going to ensure that the gasket, that the, the O-ring actually drops into place cleanly uh, and doesn't pick up and get a little tear in it, you know. So, just about with everything else that we assemble on an engine, we always put a little bit of oil on there. You can use a bit of grease if you want. Oil's handy, so use oil. I've given up with gloves at the moment. This is terrible, I know. But my hands have seen much oil, so it's really hot and sticky today. My my fingers are actually starting to get um, 
you know they go damp and really skin starts to weaken and that's a bad thing for me I like strong skin okay um, this could go on probably in two different positions and it needs to go in on that position if you fit it the wrong way around of course oh yeah, it does actually fit uh, your pipe will come out the wrong place and you're going to get oil running out of there so your breathers normally are at a reasonably high point and if you look inside the baffle's got two little drain holes as well so we'll pop that in there we go align it and we should have a couple of bolts for that that one looks way too short so let me let me find the bolts oh here we are look took them out earlier on m6 again no thread lock required for these um, they're pretty high up out of the way we don't want to copy paste them either they can just go in as they are and i'll tell you the torque setting for these in a second Ten and the valve covers are ten as well. So these are all ten. Great. Cool. Done. Now valve covers next. Okay. Valve cover, one of them, it sits on like that. Yeah, you could be a cheapskate and not bother replacing these seals, but then you're going to have another leak maybe. So we'll flick those out and we're going to fit new ones. Now, all of these came in a single head top end gasket set. Give me a Yamaha, so you don't have to order them all individually and then you always forget one. So they've started now to, over the last few years, to do a full kit, which is much, much better. Thank you, Yamaha. Makes my life a lot easier, makes the parts guy guy's life a lot easier too. Real simple, she's in, new one. Bit of oil, run it round. Again, it just helps later on. Cool. Pop it on and um, Again, these bolts are, uh, the torque setting is 10 Newton meters. Which we are still on, fortunately. Okay. So again, just, just work them up to the, the maximum torque. Don't, uh, don't do one at a time, just work your way around and bring them all up evenly. Hey, we're running out of parts, this is good. Okay, next. I love it when a plan comes together. But it's not over till the fat lady sings, is it? And in our world, that's when we start the engine. And we check for leaks. And we make sure it's running right. And it drives okay. And then, and only then, can we really be happy. <laughs> but then there's another job booked in. So it just never stops. Okay. The life of a mechanic. It's alright. It's fun. It's good to make things good again. I hate seeing stuff broken. And you never have enough time to fix everything. Okay, so a new one in, real simple. Dab of oil around there just to help it seat properly. Okay. Engine cover, rocket cover, rocket inspection cover, rocket access cover, call it what you like, doesn't matter. Still does a good job. Well, Max, come and have a look. Okay, so same again. Just bring them up to sort of just over finger tight and then tweak them up. Ten. 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 
Done. Oil pipe. External engine oil pipe. Why do we take that off? Hmm. Was there another reason than just stripping the head down? I don't think there was. Okay. New couple of washers, three bolts. We are close. We are very close. External oil pipe. Obviously before you refit it, check for any kind of cracks, corrosion, that kind of thing. Now's a good time to change it. If that springs a leak, you're going to lose oil pressure to the camshaft. Then you're going to blow the bearings on the camshaft and the, the, the lobes are going to excessively wear too. Then you're going to get excessive valve, uh, valve clearance essentially. And then she's not going to run very well and she's eventually going to not idle. And Then at that point somebody's going to run out of engine oil and to have scored all the bearings and oh, what a mess. So check it now. That's your job. Okay, now before you fit the new um, the new copper washers, just get the banjo bolt, just like on the brake stuff. Get the banjo bolt and remove any dirt that's on that ceiling area for the first washer. It needs to be nice and clean. Dirt is bad, it contaminates stuff and stops things from sealing properly. It doesn't take a second. Sure, the whole all these seconds add up, I know, but... Do a good job once. Do it, do it right, do it once. Do it once, do it right. What did they say? Right, get rid of all the old washers. Don't need those. New washers. Each one in its separate packet. Again, it's worthwhile ordering the genuine... I mean, they, these came in the kit anyway, the, the top end gasket set, but it's well worth while ordering the, the genuine um, copper washers. They're a few cents more, but they're exactly the right size. Um, sure, you can skimp a little bit and you can get them out of one of those multi-washer kit things that you can buy. Um, there's plenty of companies out there sell those. You buy one box, it's got heaps of different ones in it, but quite often they're not exactly right. And when they're not exactly right, there's a chance they're going to leak. So you get your banjo bolts and you put one washer on each. Ah, that's what that last bolt's for. It's going to hold this on. Right, now, this fits on there like that. So we'll start at the top. So I want, hang on. Let's just give those mating surfaces a bit of a clean too. We don't want any dirt on those. There we go. Right, so pop that through there, through there, and now we can offer it up. Just put them on loosely because you need some, some movement for the rest of it. So, top one's on, large banjo bolt, through, another couple washer at the back, and again, just just a couple of turns is all you want for now. Last banjo bolt. These two larger ones are the same. Fiddly is the last one because you've got to try and get that last couple of washer around the back. So no doubt you get a few goes at that. There we are. Okay, and now just do them all up finger tight. You don't want any stress in that pipe. And we can even pop that in at this point as well. Although we'll do that up at the end. There we go. And the top thing we'll do at 20. Which is a lot smaller. And last but not least, we've got 
the retaining bolt, which is 10 newton meters again. Another M6, another M6 10 newton meters. There we go. Yeah, my mate, you come to say hello. Cool. Done. Okay, uh, one of the final things just before we sign this off um, as a video, top end build, uh, or head replacement and build and so on, um, I'm going to pop the spark plug in. Now that's going to prevent any kind of contaminants getting into the cylinder whilst it's waiting to be dropped into the vehicle. It shouldn't be too long, but this is quite a windy day and there's dust around, so we'll pop that in there now. Now the tightening torque for the spark plug is 13, that's 1.3 Newton meters. Again, it's not a lot. It's amazing how easy things are over tightened. There we go. So a little bit of copper paste on the threads of the spark plug really help to prevent it from seizing in the head. Again, these agricultural vehicles sometimes get, don't get serviced for years. And then, of course, getting the spark plug out can be a bit of a problem, so that was a good idea. Right, spark plug sockets required. Perfect. Right, 13 newton meters, that small torque wrench. There we go. Extension. Now, these have a crush washer on the spark plugs, so it's going to turn for a bit and then suddenly get tight. There you go. 13 newton meters, done. Okay, so on this particular video, we have rebuilt or reassembled the cylinder head. We've put the valves back in, we've put the camshaft back in, we've done all that kind of stuff. And now we've come to put the cylinder head onto the barrel, bolted it all up, torqued it all down. We've done the valve timing by putting the cam chain on and putting the sprockets in the correct place and everything. We've double checked the, the valve timing is correct by rotating the engine um, very slowly, carefully, cautiously. One full turn of the camshaft to make sure again that the alignment marks all line up. That's critical that you do that. Very important. If you don't and you've got it wrong, come to crank the engine over, good chance you're going to bend the valve. And now we've come to put the cylinder head onto the barrel, bolted it all up, torqued it all down. We've done the valve timing by putting the cam chain on and putting the sprockets in the correct place and everything. Double check the, the valve timing is correct by rotating the engine um, very slowly, carefully, cautiously. One full turn of the camshaft to make sure again that the alignment marks all line up. That's critical that you do that. Very important. If you don't and you've got it wrong, come to crank the engine over, good chance you're going to bend the valve. So this engine now, other than changing this external cover, which I'll do, and I'm not going to do a video of that, it's real simple. Um, this engine now is ready to go back into the Viking, which we're going to make a start on this afternoon and probably finish in the early hours of the morning though now look and it'll be busy time okay thank you very much for watching i hope you found that uh, that video helpful i've tried to include as many of the torque settings that i have to hand as possible uh, i apologize i don't have the torque settings for the external oil pipe you're going to have to look those up um, manuals are pretty easy to get off the net these days anyway uh, everything else i think we have the torque setting for so it all works out pretty well oh there is one more thing we haven't done, and you can fit these yourself, but there's the two little covers to go, uh, that's for the Tammy Mark cover, and that's the one that uh, gives you access to the centre nut of the flywheel. That one is 2 newton metres, and that one is 1.5 newton metres, yes, I know, it's nothing, but that's what it is, 1.5 newton metres, it will be tightened up more than that, you can guarantee it, I don't want this thing falling out. Uh, and that's 2 newton meters. I don't think my torque wrench even goes down to 1.5 newton meters. It's like a breath. Anyway, so please don't forget to put those on. I'll do those shortly. Um, other than that, we're all done. Uh, I'm going to have a 
five minutes and then I'll get the engine hoist and we'll get this thing up in the air and get it put back in the run, uh, into the Viking. Okay, so my name's Andy Young. I am one of the automotive lecturers for Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And uh, I produce these videos um, really primarily for my students who uh, will be watching these this one before we reassemble our engines during class time. But I also feel that they are useful um, for you guys out in the world because you're going to have, maybe have a Yamaha Viking that you're going to have to uh, do some work on. And you may not have the manual to hand or you may not have stripped an engine down before. So I'm hoping this video has helped, maybe not to teach you how to do it from, from scratch, but to maybe clarify a few issues and give you a few tips too. <coughs> Dying. Okay. Time for me to buy a new shirt and uh, time for you to go and fix your Yamaha Viking. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers. I'll run out. <laughs>